So this is going to be a super short video on analog computers and um, what you see right now is the output of a very simple analog computer that I put together and here it is on the breadboard it's just made of um, a couple components just um, you have an, an op amp there an analog switch and a couple passive components um, and my lab power supplies powering it all and um, basically what I've programmed this computer to be doing is solving a differential equation which differential equations are kind of what analog computers are really most suited for solving um, that's that's really what they excel at and that's what people use them for so the differential equation that I'm solving is this one right here you see I have x dot equals x is the equation um, or that is the derivative of x is equal to x the derivative of x with respect to time is equal to x where x is a function of some kind um, and then you can also integrate both sides to get x equals the integral of x plus c um, and the solution for this equation you can find analytically pretty easily and it's just x equals e to the x um, or the trivial case where x equals zero um, but x equals e to the x is what we're mostly interested in so the way you solve this um, in the analog domain is uh, you, you set up the computer as shown in this little diagram here. So you have an integrator and a summer, uh, which is an inverting summer. So in analog computers, um, the summing components are typically inverting as well as the integrators. In fact, I think probably all the components except multipliers are inverting. And that's just kind of the, the way it has to be because of um, how how op amps work with negative feedback and stuff. So basically the, um, the integrator is integrating, we'll just assume that the input to the integrator is equal to the function x. In that case, the output will be equal to the integral of x, um, the negative integral of x, that is, uh, because it, it inverts. So um, the negative of x inverted once more will be x, um, and then you feed that back into the integrator, which is x, and, and so it, it seems like a, a self-fulfilling type situation that, um, that couldn't possibly work because it's, it's solving for something that, it's solving for the, a solution based on the assumption that it's already found the solution. That's what it seems like, but in fact, that's exactly what you want, and that allows it to solve um, these equations quite accurately and and very quick as well. So you can see this um, this chart on the oscilloscope here is indeed the uh, graph of e to the x, um, or pretty pretty close to it. Um, and you can see I can I can scale it down as well. So the the way this works is the the integrator and the inverting sum block are both contained in this um, TLO seventy two op amp. Um, th this is the integrator here on the bottom and then the, the summer is on the top and the analog switch there that is used to reset the integrator and it's basically powered by my function generator which is outputting a pulse like so um, and the pulse basically resets the integrator each cycle so that way you can It'll, or that way it'll redraw itself on the oscilloscope screen. Um, and of course, if you make the pulses happen too fast, you don't really see very much of the E to the X. It just looks flat because of the, the beginning of E to the X. Um, of course, you could probably zoom in on this and, and now it looks kind of the same. Um, or you can just give it some more time to grow large again and it, it looks like the familiar E to the X. So, Hopefully that was a helpful little introduction to analog computers. You can do a lot with these um, very simple devices. Um, it just takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of a new level of insight, I guess we shall say, to to really know how to program them um, based on the feedback principles that they kind of rely on. Cool. So hope this video was useful. Thanks for watching.